Hi everyone, do you like free stuff? Perhaps plants, rocks, and miscellaneous other pieces of vegetation? Well I thought so, and that's why I'm going to tell you about Plant Library today, which is a free collection of, well, what I just told you, plants, bushes, rocks, etc. Um, this is something I know that probably a lot of you already know about because it's got so many downloads on Blender Market. They should have gone in a community roundup, but I figured um, I might do a little bit of a deeper dive into it. So as you can see here, I'm in Blender. I've got like a lovely little setup here, just kind of demonstrating some of the asset pieces. Got the rocks with some moss detail. If you zoom in, there's actually quite a lot of quality here um, but I'm seeing some black areas I suspect that may be because of my light paths let me uh, increase the transparent there we go so you can see these are some pretty high quality vegetation pieces so it's nice that they're being provided for free and this is coming from BD3D over on Blender Market the creator of the Geo Scatter add-on which is again something I highly recommend you take a look at if you're interested in doing vegetation scattering especially for things like architectural visualization I'll try and show some examples of the use cases for the add-on on the screen here one of the interesting things about this free collection though is it's compatible with the asset browser which is great it means that the content is easily accessible from inside of blender so you can just drag and drop things into your scene and then from there you can rescale them modify them etc you have access to the materials in the shader editor of course so i think this will be useful for like a wide number of use cases and you know especially for people that don't have access to like good high quality photo scanned assets so i'll leave a link in the description but i'll show you quickly how to kind of get it set up just in case you've never used the asset browser in blender before so if you do get hold of the plant library you'll see that there are a variety of downloads available including an installation tutorial a quick start guide they also have a scatter pack so this is for making it compatible with the geo scatter add-on but we're not going to focus on that today the thing you'd want to download if you just want to use this content as is dragging it into blender is the plant library for b 3.3 plus zip file in this case it's a raw file but that's still a compressed folder so if you download that you get it on your computer and using 7-zip which is what I'm using to open zip files, but you can use WinRAR or anything else that supports the RAR format. You can open that up and then see that inside you have a blend file which contains the plant content and then you have a couple of text files. So this is effectively an asset library. The text files describe the categories. So as we can see down here in the asset browser, the creator has already organized everything into individual collections. So it means that you can filter through very easily. If you just wanna look for rocks, for example, you can find those, click and drag that into your scene. So the way we get this into Blender is we're going to extract this content to a folder. I'm just going to make a new one here and I'll call it plant library two because I've already got one set up. And then we're just going to extract the contents of this compressed folder into our asset library. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to want to know the directory. So I'm going to just grab this directory here. So we're going to point Blender to this folder. Then from inside of Blender, we can go edit preferences. Then we want to go down to file paths. Let me expand this. And then down here under asset libraries, you have all of your previously set up libraries. So I've already added the plant library once, but that's why I named our new folder two. So I'm going to press the plus button and then we're going to find that folder like I've got here. You won't see any files inside of it but we're just going to press add asset library once we know we're at the folder location. And then it will automatically assign the name there based on the name of the folder. Now, if I press refresh down here in the asset browser and click on this list, we will see that we have plant library two accessible from the asset browser. And from here we can grab the content. And when you press on all, it will generate the thumbnails for the first time. So we can actually get a visual representation of what can be seen. And then from there, it's just a matter of dressing your scene using whatever content you like. Now this is lovely for dioramas in the case of what I have on the screen here. Yeah, but I figure maybe I'll, you know, give you a few more tips about how to use this. See, this would be like a great scene for like putting a character there, kind of like standing on the rock and posing. Maybe I'll save that because I actually quite like that setup. Okay, but what if you want to like scatter a wide area at once? Maybe let's just do like a quick demo using geometry nodes. What I'm going to do is make a few collections to store different sizes of these objects. So I'm going to make a collection called Flora Small. And then inside of here, what should I put in? I've got like grass pieces. I'll put that in the small. Because what we're going to do is we're going to scatter these around. And obviously we want like more small things and then a smaller number of medium and then large things. So if we separate these down into different collections, it'll be easy to isolate those values in terms of like the scattering distribution. So I've got some leaves in there. Actually, I don't want duplicates. So just give me a moment to dissect this uh, flora. I'm gonna make another collection called rocks. And that's what I'll put the rock into. Flora medium. All right, let me just reorganize this a little bit. And so here we go. We've got flora small, flora medium and rocks. So this is basically containing all of the objects we have here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to hide these for now. Oh, there's one more to put in. There we go. So all of those objects are hidden. Now I'm going to make a plane. So this will effectively be the ground plane that we're going to scatter the objects onto. Let me just make that a bit lower. From here, I'm gonna go to the modifier stack. Then we're going to add a geometry nodes modifier. Let's press new there. And I'll name it something like scatter. Now let me 
open my geometry nodes editor here. So from here, we're going to add a collection info node. I will add a few of them because we have free collections of things that we want to scatter. So in one of them, I'll choose flora small, flora medium and rocks. I'm also going to tick the reset and separate children on each of these. So now we effectively want to scatter these onto the plane. I'm actually going to scale this up and then press Control A and choose scale to apply the scale, effectively giving us a larger surface area to scatter things on. Then I'm going to press Shift A and distribute points on faces. What this will do is give us a random distribution of points on the area of the plane. Then you can see them represented here by the spheres if you're in a cycles, which I am. If you're in Eevee, then these virtualized spheres won't appear, but that's okay. In fact, the points will still effectively exist regardless of what engine you're using. But cycles has this thing in geometry nodes where it kind of auto renders these virtualized spheres, which is great for doing like point cloud stuff. But anyway, that's for a uh, different video. So we now have points. Now let's uh, do instance on points. Grab that node here and plug that in. So now what this will let us do is effectively instance objects from these collections onto the points that we had generated. So let me take the flora small and plug that into the instance input here. And you can see that it's now starting to do something. It's not exactly what we want. It's basically placing every object in the collection onto every point. And to randomize this a bit, we're going to tick the pick instance value. And what this will do is for every one of those points, it will take a different object from that collection. Now, if we go back and change the density, you can see how we can increase and decrease this. Now you can control the distribution with like generated noise textures, etc. But we're actually going to skip out on that for now. If you want like more advanced scattering methods, again, I recommend you take a look at the Geo Scatter add-on because that's just got like an insane amount of control, as well as you know additional artistic content, different types of biomes, etc. Definitely worth checking out. What I'm actually going to do is maybe add a bit more grass to our collection here. So let me go back to our asset library, add another grass object, put it inside of Flora Small, trying to give us a bit more variety, maybe some forest clovers. Let's put that in. Just kind of like increasing the random distribution of things we can get. Maybe some of this like dryland bush. Um, obviously, like this isn't super realistic in the way that you wouldn't really have all of these distributions happening in like one biome. But just for the sake of showing you how to uh, add these things together, I think it's quite fun. So that's one collection that we have being distributed. And now to add a bit more variety, we can like randomize the scale. So let me move these things down here. Let's make a combined XYZ node. So the scale is three values together. This is a vector a three dimensional vector, meaning there are three values, so X, Y, and Z. And if we change the Z value, you can see that the height of these scattered objects is changing. So let me set this to one and plug that in. And what the combined XYZ node effectively does is it gives us these values exposed so we can modify them. Now, say for example, I made a random value node, had it kept on float and set the minimum to something like 0.8 and then the maximum to something like 1.5 and then plug this into the Z value, you can see that we start getting some random variety on the height. So if I change these values, like increasing the max and decreasing the minimum, then you get even more of a difference between those different objects. So here we have some artistic control over how different you want them to be. So if I do 0 0.5 and 1.5, that might be okay. You also have the rotation, so you can do the same thing again to kind of like randomize their position a bit. Again, I would recommend doing it on the Z axis just to give a bit more of like a random turn for each of them. So maybe let's do the same thing again here. But for this, we want the values to be a bit different. So I've set X and Y to zero. And for the Z, we're gonna do in radian values, maybe negative pi times two, which would be 360 degrees one way, and then pi times two the other direction. Basically, if you know your degrees, 360 degrees is a complete turn. We don't necessarily need to do that in both negative and positive. We could do 180. It depends like how far you want this to be able to turn both ways. Let's do negative pi and then pi because I think that'll be all right. So now the Z direction, like spinning on the point, has some extra variety. Okay, so now because geometry nodes is parametric, this is quite nice in the way that we can actually go into edit mode and increase you know, the shape of the plane here to change the amount of ground covered. Now, because the points being distributed are trying to stretch out over the shape, we need to compensate by adding extra density. Now, of course, there are other ways to distribute points on faces, but this is like the simplest way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna move these out the way. We have our distribute and instances for our small flora. We can do the same thing for our others as well. But because we're going to change the value slightly for the other collections, I'm going to keep them separate. Let me put that up there. All right, so I'll make a frame for this as well, just to keep it, you know, a bit more organized. And let me press N, name this frame Flora Small. Nice. So the next thing we'll do is the medium sized flora. Let me grab, copy and paste this distribute points on faces, plug the geometry into that, copy and paste the instance on points 
plug the points in and the instances, of course. And now obviously, if we wanted to plug these instances into the geometry output, it will replace our small flora, which is not what we want. We want to actually combine them together. So we're going to make a join geometry node, plug that in here. So we have the small flora going into the joint geometry and we want to plug in our medium flora, but of course there's too much of the medium flora because we just copied and pasted the values. So let's reduce the density here. So basically we only have a few of the medium sized objects popping in. I might turn on the denoising as well, just to make this a bit easier to uh, render. So again, because we have the pig instance ticked, it's going to be selecting random medium sized flora objects to scatter on those points. Now let's grab our randomization values, copy, paste, and drag these over. So again, Again, we're only affecting the Z values here. Let's plug in the rotation and the scale. So again, up to you, you can control here like the scale height wise. And I actually feel like this green one is maybe a bit too high compared to our pink flower over here. So what I might do is do a little bit of extra trickery go back to the collection. Let me move these out the way so they're easier to see. So these are our source objects. And by default, the green is a lot higher than the wildflowers they are. So what I'm actually going to do is scale this one down. Okay. And then I'm going to click and then press control A scale to apply the scale. So what that will do is it actually forces it to become the new size. So now when we take a look at our scene, we can see that the green medium sized flora is actually lower than the wild flowers. Now this is not necessarily realistic. I'm just kind of adjusting this for artistic purposes, but I want them to be smaller than the wild flowers. Now, if we modify the sizes here, we can see everything compensates and the wild flowers have like the, uh, the higher size overall. Okay, nice. So that's our medium done. Let me make a new frame for this and I will name the frame flora medium. So now the last thing to do is the rocks using the same method that we've been doing so far. Let's copy and paste over all that we need. I'm going to plug the geometry into the distribute points, collection into the instance. I've got my randomization plugged in. We'll plug this into the joint geometry. Now there's going to be quite a few rocks scattered in here already. Maybe that's not so bad. Maybe we actually quite like that. So I just noticed that somewhere along the way, my randomization values went wrong. I might have accidentally pressed control Z at the wrong time. So let me just reset these high values to pi again for our random rotation. Now, but of course, because we don't have um, collision detection here at the moment, there are different ways you could do that. Uh, there are even ways you can like incorporate weight painting into this to decide where to place objects. I've gone over that a little bit in some like previous geometry nodes generative modeling videos. But in this case, what I'm going to do is like reduce the density a bit so we get fewer rocks and then you can can scrub the seed value here to basically randomize the position of those rocks. And then for the rest of it, it just kind of depends on like where you want to place your camera. So finally, let me add a new frame for this and I'll call this rocks. Now, like I said, this is an extremely simple method of distributing using geometry nodes, but you know, it's quite an easy one to understand. Just bringing in collection objects, doing a very small amount of randomization to put them on top of a plane. Now, if we look back at our scene, let me close the asset browser here. Let me uh, change the resolution a bit, widen our field of view. You know, this is just like a quick demonstration to get you up and running with doing a very simply scattered scene using this free content. So here you go again, you know, maybe this is a nice scene to put like another character in there and kind of have fun messing around with the lighting and other objects to get it looking nice. And you know, I've shown off the physical starlight and atmosphere add-on recently. So let me hide the light catcher, bring up that add-on and uh, tick the box, increase the vertical, gives us a bit of a time of day feel. Maybe I will increase the size of the plane. And here I'm basically just improving to show that you can get, you know, something quite pretty inside of Blender, you know, in a relatively short amount of time. See, so yeah, if you found this interesting, then uh, feel free to take a look at the package over on Blender Market. I think it's great to see more content creators giving stuff away for free. It's also good publicity for their other content. For example, the Biome Reader and the GeoScatter add-on, which again, I recommend you take a look at because the density of the feature set is really impressive. With so many ways to scatter objects, not just vegetation. And the fact that it's so useful for like so many different types of artwork and projects, um, I think it's great. Loads of people use it, lots of really cool results. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. So if you made it this far for the video, then consider putting a plant based emoji in the comments. And if you do, it will show me who actually made it this far for the video. Also, if you want more free stuff, you can check out my store at codasol.online slash store. There's a bunch of free and paid content on there, but we do have a good distribution of free stuff, which you can get from Gumroad or for $1 on Blender Market. Remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you can be informed of future content. And also a special thank you to the patrons who keep this channel running. So yeah, thanks for watching. Happy blending, and I will see you next time.